You know who I am. I can see it in your faces. That look of shock, that look of contempt, and yes, even hatred. I can see it there. Yeah, I am Judas, Judas Iscariot, Judas the traitor. I am possibly the most loathed, most despised man that ever lived. Although I can think of a couple of others who might run me a close second. And what did I do to earn your hostility? I led the elders, the Sanhedrin, to Jesus, and they arrested him and took him away. I started the course of events that led to his death upon the cross, the crucifixion of a son of God. But I wonder if any of you have stopped and asked why I did what I did. Surely you don't think I did it for 30 pieces of silver. Really? All is not as you have been told. But I need to tell you a little about myself to help you understand what really happened. I come from a family of five and my father was a carpenter. Well, more a woodworker. He made furniture, tables, chairs, benches. Not beautiful, but strong, robust. And as a child, I, I loved to watch him work. As I grew older, I helped him more and more. So it wasn't to anybody's surprise that after my bar mitzvah, I went to work with him full time in the workshop. The town where we lived was at a crossroads. It was a busy place. With travellers coming and going to places far away, bringing custom to the inns and the bars and news and gossip from all over the land. There was news of what our, our oppressors, the Romans, were doing. We had no love of them. They controlled all aspects of our lives. I learned very quickly to keep my head down when the Romans were around. And of course, to smile when I paid my taxes. We longed for freedom. There were often whispers and mutterings of people about to start a rebellion, an uprising, but these always amounted to nothing. There was talk of new prophets who would set us free, lead us out of our enslavement. They were always false. They promised to do this, they promised to do that, and nothing happened. Then I saw Jesus. I had heard about him from travellers passing through, of how they felt loved when he preached, how he helped the needy and made the sick well just by the touch of his hand, and his promise that the meek would inherit the earth. People spoke of the love they felt for him and their belief that he was the one. He was the one to lead us out of these troubled times, that he was the Son of God and would lead us to a better life. So one day I heard that he was close by and going to preach to a crowd that had gathered around him. And I went with my eldest son to hear him. There were hundreds of people there gathered at the foot of a small hill where he was to speak. And we were entranced. Although he spoke softly, we all heard him clearly. There was a real wisdom and a warmth in his words. He was strong, yet humble at the same time. He spoke of love and freedom. He talked to the one true God who loved us all. The poor, the sick, the lonely, and, and yes, the tax collectors too. And he spoke of how he was here to lead us to everlasting life. What he said made perfect sense to me. I knew it was the truth. And it 
was that simple. I was hooked, and I decided that from this day forth, I would follow him. I sent my son back to tell my family what had happened, and that I would now walk with Jesus. I became one of his 12 closest followers, and there was a close bond between us, and perhaps both being carpenters helped. I came to feel that I was his friend as well as his disciple. And over the next three years, I saw how he changed people. I saw the sick healed, the troubled calmed, the crippled rise from their beds just because he told them to, and they believed him. I saw him walk on water. That was really something. I was there when he calmed the storm that threatened to drown us when we were sailing in the Sea of Galilee. This truly was the Son of God, and he was here to save us, save us all, and lead us home to heaven. We were travelling back to Jerusalem, to celebrate the Passover when he took me aside and we talked quietly out of earshot of the others he told me that he needed to meet with the priests of the Sanhedrin so that they would understand that he was the son of God we talked and argued for a while I told him that I was afraid for his safety if he met with them, they saw him as a threat to their power and their influence. They wanted to be rid of him. At best, they would lock him up and throw away the key. And at worst, they would have him killed. But he wasn't to be moved. He wasn't to going to listen. There were times when he could be so... He told me that this was what he had to do and I was to make the arrangements. This was his father's will and placing his hands on my shoulders, looking deep into my eyes, he said, I need your help so that I can do as my father has instructed me. After that, there was no more to be said for neither of us had any choice. It was God's will. So with heavy heart, I went and did as he instructed. I spoke with the priests. I told them that I would lead, I would lead them to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane the following evening. And they came and they arrested him. And they took him away. And that was the last time I saw him. You hate me for what I did. I hate myself. But I was true to Jesus. I did what I was instructed to do. I was his loving, faithful servant, and I followed the will of Jesus, as Jesus followed the will of his Father. So I leave you with this. What part of my carrying out the will of God makes me a traitor?